Y'all, if you're anything like me, then you are probably no stranger to the feeling of absolute overwhelm. You probably also procrastinate an awful lot, even though you want to do a lot of things. So if either of those two situations relate to you, then stick around because today I'm going to break down why we feel this way and what we can actually do to fix it. Now, this video is the third installment of a series that I'm doing for all you ADHDers that have been diagnosed later in life, and you're not even sure what it is or how it's really impacting you, which makes it really difficult to start building compensatory methods to actually help you cope with your adult ADHD. So in the first video, I broke down what ADHD actually is and how it might show up for you specifically as it relates to executive function. In the second video, I start breaking down some of the major themes that those of us with adult ADHD deal with. And then in this video, we're gonna tackle time management and productivity so that you can start to manage your feelings of overwhelm and your behaviors around procrastination so that, again, you can start living your best ADHD life. So let's get into it. And of course, if you're new here, my name is Kara McGill. I'm an ADHD coach and creator, and I'm here for the busy, ambitious brain who really want to get schnizzle done, but they probably feel pretty overwhelmed and have a tendency to procrastinate for no apparent reason. And we're going to get into that right now. So let's start by addressing the two pain points that I mentioned, overwhelm and procrastination. Now, obviously, these are huge topics and I'm not going to be able to do justice in one single video without making it 24 hours long. But what I can do is give you a framework for thinking about both of those things so that you can start to manage them in your own life and hopefully coach yourself towards less overwhelm and more productivity. So let's start with the feeling of overwhelm, which is basically defined as having a to-do list or a task that is bigger than your perceived time, energy, and resources in order to get it done. So when we have that feeling of not being able to close the loop or complete something that needs to get done, it can evoke a ton of different consequences for anyone, much less ADHDers. But let's focus on the ADHD brain. What happens when we shift into that feeling of overwhelm? Well, one of the most common things we do is procrastinate, which is why these two topics are so intertwined. But overwhelm can go a lot deeper than that because not only are we aware that we don't have the resources to complete something that needs to get done, but we're also very quick to start attaching stories about ourselves that relate to that sense of overwhelm. I'm overwhelmed because I can't do anything right. I'm overwhelmed because I just can't think properly or I'm not smart enough or I'm not skilled enough or I'm not doing enough with my life. I'm overwhelmed because I'm never reaching my potential, even though I feel like I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I know you guys feel that way because I feel that way too. And if I want to get really real with you, my personal ADHD overwhelm meter is like an 11 and a half out of 10 right now this week. Like case in point, I am not supposed to be in this room right now recording this video. But it wasn't until I went to go check in for my flight last week that I happened to notice that my passport is about seven months expired. And I actually have three passports, a U.S., a Canadian and a British one. And all of them are expired because hashtag ADHD. And while it's really nice to be a woman of the world, it's completely useless to have all of these passports if all of them are expired and I can't leave the country. So I had to cancel that trip at the last minute, which started to brew up all these stories about why can't I stay on top of things? And this is such an easy adulting thing to do. Why is it that I have three passports and not one of them is valid? And to add insult to injury, I have two more international trips coming up that are already booked and paid for. And if I don't get my passport renewed in time, then I'm not going anywhere. So you can see how this starts to build more than just a feeling of overwhelm, then starts to lead into a bit of a shame spiral and one out of 10 do not recommend going in that direction. So all of that to say, overwhelm happens to all of us. It is nothing to be ashamed of, but I know how hard it can be to manage your own emotions when these things come up. And of course, emotional regulation and self-regulation is a huge part of managing overwhelm and procrastination. And it's such a big topic that it deserves a video on its own, which I will deal with next week. But coming back to the topic of today, let's now define what procrastination is. And simply said, it's when you know you have to do something because there's a deadline looming, but for whatever reason, you can't actually bring yourself to do the thing. And there's a lot of reasons why everyone procrastinates, but there's some very specific ones that relate to the ADHD experience. And a big part of it, again, comes back to self-regulation. So let's take a closer look at why ADHD folks procrastinate as much as they do. And an interesting call out, procrastination is not actually listed as a symptom of ADHD in the DSM-5. 
it's listed as an outcome of our inattention, which makes a lot of sense because when you have dysregulated attention and you can't focus on things that you know you need to focus on, it obviously makes it really hard to start that task. But I also think there's a lot more to procrastination when it comes to ADHD. For example, it might be a low interest task and you don't have enough dopamine in your system in order to get started. It can also be related to that sense of overwhelm. So last week when I realized my passport had expired, I was then in a frantic hurry to figure out how to get an expedited renewal. And of course, dealing with any paperwork or government websites or government agencies just like gives me the heebie-jeebies to begin with. So that feeling of overwhelm made it so hard to even think about what my first step might be. And to that point, very often the reason we procrastinate on projects is because we don't know the right point of entry. Planning, prioritization, and organization are all executive functions that a lot of ADHDers struggle with. So when you are looking at a big ominous task that needs to be done, like getting your passport renewed. It's actually not a task. It's a whole project because you got to fill up forms. You got to get new photos. You got to find a government office that you can go to and make an appointment, talk to some cranky ass person behind the counter who doesn't want to be there or doesn't want to help you. And you've got to deal with a lot of moving pieces. And when you struggle with prioritization, those moving pieces can be completely overwhelming in and of itself. And when you can't find a clear point of entry, it just feels like even getting started is insurmountable. So in your mind, you're spiraling with all of these emotions because you don't even know where to get started. But what you might not have been aware of until now, that is, is that there's a specific executive function that is getting in your way of getting started. So that's why it is so important. And this is tool number one. When you find yourself starting to procrastinate and there's a big deadline looming, it's really helpful to ask yourself, what is it going on here? Is it that I don't know where to start? Is it that I don't have enough dopamine to start? Is it that I need some sense of structure, like having another person present? Or do I need some sort of a body doubling service? And if that's what you need, or if you haven't tried body doubling yet, I highly recommend using Flow Club, which is an online service where it's basically a bunch of people hanging out on Zoom. And just having other people on a screen is almost magic in terms of creating some sense of structure and accountability for you to get things done. So if you want to give body doubling a try, I will link to Flow Club in the description below, and it'll give you a free trial so you can just see if it's for you or not. But it has actually been really helpful for me when I get in those moments of procrastination and I'm working at home and I just need a little bit of extra accountability. Another thing that comes up for ADHDers in terms of procrastination, and I've noticed this in myself, we're very quick to overcommit and say yes to things that we should really be saying no to. And when that happens, we have committed our future self to something we know our future self is not gonna wanna do. So when the time comes to actually do the thing and your future self is now your today self, that today self starts to really resent the earlier self who committed to the damn thing in the first place because you don't wanna do it. And that again can lead to emotional dysregulation where you start feeling bad about yourself and resenting the person or thing that you committed to doing. That is why it is so important to commit yourself to not overcommitting your future self. Because every time you commit yourself to something you don't want to do, that is an act of self-abandonment. And when you get to that day, when you have to do the thing that you really don't want to do, you're going to feel that sense of self-abandonment and it is not going to feel good. So at this point, I hope I've given you a good awareness of the felt experience behind procrastination and overwhelm and what happens behind the scenes and how our emotions impact our behaviors. With that said, what do we actually do about this? Well, a very smart man, I believe it was Einstein, said that you can't solve a problem with the same mindset that you came into it with. So for example, if your mindset is, why am I always procrastinating? And why am I always feeling overwhelmed? What the hell's wrong with me? You're gonna have a hard time coming up with tactical strategies to manage that. Instead, we wanna flip that mindset around and ask the question, what can I do to reduce feelings of overwhelm in my life and actually reduce the behaviors of procrastination before they start to bubble up. And now that we have a sense of awareness of what's happening behind the scenes when we start behaving in those ways, now we can look at practical tools and strategies to help manage them on the day-to-day. -day. I'm not gonna promise you that you'll never feel overwhelmed again or that you'll never procrastinate again because these are part of the human experience. But what we can do is lessen the impact they have on our day-to-day -day life. And the two things I like to focus on to reduce overwhelm and procrastination is developing time management skills and creating a productivity 
system or approach that works for your ADHD brain. So let's break that down. Why is it important to create time management skills? Number one, ADHDers are not very good at being cognizant of the passage of time. So we can sit down to do something, slip into hyper-focus, and we may think like an hour has gone past, but meanwhile, it's getting dark outside. We haven't eaten in seven hours and we really have to go to the bathroom, right? Like this happens to us a lot. Even getting ready or doing things in the house, we're easily distracted and we're not aware of the passage of time. So that often results in us being late for things or having way too many things to do and not enough time to get them done, which then leads to that feeling of overwhelm. So to combat that problem, here's an exercise I want you to do. This is one of many tools that are available in my program, Distraction in Action, which is an entire productivity framework for ADHD brains. But this is just a small sample that I think is really impactful. Write down all of the things that you do every single day in your daily life. Let's say Monday to Friday, look at a time block in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. So whatever that looks like for you, grab a piece of paper and a pen and write it down in blocks of time. And then what I want you to do, beside every main activity, I want you to write down a time estimate of how long you think that activity takes. Like how long does it take to get everybody out the door? Or how long does it take to commute to work? Or how long do you actually stay at work? Et cetera, et cetera, right? So now you've got a list of things you do and the estimated time that it's going to take to actually do the thing. And then what I want you to do is take that piece of paper and a pen and I want you to put it by the entrance of your bathroom tomorrow morning or tonight before you go to bed. That is going to be a prompt and reminder for you that you want to record the time that you're crossing that threshold. That is when your morning starts. And then what I want you to do is take the piece of paper as soon as you put the time down and put it by the front door because that's when you're going to record the time of when you actually leave the house. And then I want you to just go about your regular morning routine and see how long it actually takes. And I bet nine times out of 10, you have dramatically underestimated how long each like a big activity in their life actually takes. And once you have a record of that, like hopefully you're able to go through and measure an entire day, but as much as you can, and it's not going to be 100% accurate, but once you have a record of that, and then you multiply that by five for Monday to Friday, you're going to see how much of your day-to-day -day activities are taken up. And then you'll know exactly how much time you have left over after all of your daily to-dos are done to commit to other things or to commit your future self to other things. And that level of awareness that, wow, I really only have 60 minutes to myself every day, or probably even less if you're a working parent, when you realize how very little extra time you have in your day to commit to new and different things, you are going to be far more interested to spend that time moving your own personal goals forward, or just using that time to chill out on the couch and watch Netflix. No judgment. However you want to use your time, do it with intention. And the only way you can make these choices with intention is to actually know where your time is going. Now, I have two other videos that address time blindness and building time management skills. I'll link them up here and I will also link them below. But the other thing I want to mention about managing time and building time management skills is that the best thing you can do when you have ADHD is externalize your time management. Meaning, don't trust your brain to tell you when it's 4.30 so you have to go pick up your kids or go do something. Always have alarms, notifications, ask other people to prompt you, have somebody text you when something important is coming up so that you have an external source to help your brain switch from one task to the other. Because not only are we pretty lousy at managing the passage of time, but that transition from one task to another takes a lot of cognitive load. So unless we are prompted to bring ourselves out of a task and then start to move ourselves into something else, then we have to rely on our own cognitive energy to do that for us. And that can be very draining. So start becoming a ninja about having alarms and Alexa and reminders all over your house. Now let's jump into productivity for the ADHD brain. And again, this is a really big topic. I go deeper into it in Distraction Action and in other videos. But for now, let me give you a framework to think about building your own productivity system. So a lot of my clients come to me and say, you know, I tried Asana or Evernote or Notion or any of these systems and it worked for about a day and a half and then it stopped working. And what I tell my clients is that it really doesn't have that much to do with the system. Yes, some are going to be better for you than others. But in reality, the reason why your tools aren't working for you is that you haven't built structure around how you're going to use them. So you can create a beautiful schedule or to-do list in Asana, but if you write it all down and then you never visit it again, 
then it's going to be completely useless. And I know we've all done that, right? And we buy all the planners and we either don't know what to write in them or we write a bunch of stuff in them and then we never look at them again and we just figure, well, this just doesn't work for us. So here's what to do instead. You want to build a rhythm and a behavior in your life around planning and productivity. We know that planning and productivity are executive functions that we're not necessarily great at. So we need to externalize them in order for them to work for us. That means we probably do need a tool, but what we need first is a rhythm around how we're going to use that tool. So for example, a productivity system has to start with a weekly behavior of sitting down on either a Sunday or a Monday or whenever you want to start your week and planning out your week ahead. It then requires the additional behavior of you coming back to that plan at least two to three times a day to check the plan, make sure you get the things done that you need to get done, move things over that need to get moved. And at the end of the week, you've got to have a process for reviewing everything that got done that week and anything that didn't get done needs to get moved to the next week. That is a fundamental behavior that is necessary for any productivity plan to work whether you have ADHD or not. But, and I know that building routines can be challenging for some of us, but they tend to be more challenging when their routines are habits that we're not looking forward to. So the trick is you want to make this as fun as possible. If you're doing a Sunday night, maybe you have a glass of wine with you. If you're doing a Sunday morning, maybe you have a cup of tea or coffee and a little snack and you got some music going and you're going to make this fun or at the very least make it a little less sucky if this is really something that you don't like doing. And you also want to make sure that whenever you're doing this, you're doing it at a time when you feel emotionally at your best. So maybe it's after a long run or a nice dinner with your family or whatever makes you feel calm and relaxed. That is the best time to do your weekly planning because that's when your emotional regulation is at its highest. And whenever you are in that calm, emotionally regulated state, your access to your own executive functions are also going to be at their highest. So when you feel good, it makes it that much easier to plan the week ahead. I'm not going to get too far into weekly planning because I've done a bunch of videos. I'll link one up here on how I do my weekly planning, both in my personal life, and then I'll link another one up here for how I do my weekly planning in my business. But the point is you have to have that rhythm in place and you want to make it feel as good as possible. Then you want to make sure no matter what productivity tool you're using, whether it's paper and pen, or digital, that it is in front of your face all the time. So I've often shared this before. Uh, this is one computer monitor in my office, and then this is the other. So I always have one computer monitor that I'm doing my work on, and the other one always has my weekly agenda on it. So it's always on my, in front of my face, and it's far easier for me to check what I have to do next when it's in front of my face, because if it's not in front of my face, I will absolutely forget about it. And I've been doing this process for years now. So once you commit to those foundational behaviors, then you want to think about the tool that's going to work for you. You want to think about your needs. Do you need something that's going to integrate with your work communication systems or something that you need to communicate with your family with? Would a calendar do or do you need some sort of a system to actually track all of the things that you've got going on in your life? Or do you need a full-blown productivity system like Notion? That's what I use. And I always say this is the most ADHD-friendly software I've ever encountered because you can build it to be whatever you want it to be. There's definitely a learning curve, but once you figure it out, look, the world is your oyster. I will link to the template that I use if you're interested in using a Notion template. I find it helpful, but the trick is having a template for your weekly plan. Whatever you generally need to think about on a weekly basis should be in your template. And all of my things are in my template. I also measure what I enjoy doing, what I didn't like doing, where my energy was throughout the week so that I can measure not just tasks and to-dos. I can measure whether I'm going in the right direction in my life from an energy standpoint, which is hugely important for me and I think important for anyone who has ADHD. So that is, at a very simple level, the framework that I work with. First commit to the behaviors, weekly planning, checking it several times a day, and then a weekly review. And then think about what your needs are in terms of the context of your life and then choose a software or a tool that accommodates your specific needs. So now I want to pause here and go back to what we were talking about at the top of the video, overwhelm and procrastination. Imagine a version of yourself where you have a productivity routine in place that works for you. Every week, you know what you need to get done. And every week, you know how long things take. You're going to start noticing as you go through your week that there's certain tasks that you just keep bumping from one day to the next. It's really important to look at those tasks and ask yourself, did I have to move it because of other circumstances or am I just procrastinating on it? And if I'm procrastinating, 
what's going on? Is it something I don't want to do? Is it something that's really just low interest and I need to get either a body double or some more accountability to get it done? Or is what I wrote down a project rather than a task? Because if you write down on your to-do list, renew your passport, and then it comes time to actually address that task, you don't know how long it's going to take. You don't know how many steps are in there. You don't even know where to start. So these are the type of things that you'll start to build into your weekly planning routine. Monday, I'll figure out where to get my pictures done. On Tuesday, I'll figure out which government agency I need to contact. And then on Wednesday, I'll fill out the forms and I'll go to that agency. Once you start realizing the difference between a project and a task, and you're able to break them down for your future self to actually get them done, it is going to alleviate so much procrastination. And it's also going to alleviate overwhelm because now that you're clear on how much time things in your life take, you will be so less likely to fill up your free time blocks with nonsense requests from other people, which is dramatically going to help you reduce that feeling of overwhelm. I am not blowing smoke here, guys. Once you get this system and rhythm in place in your life and it becomes a habit, you're going to find that you have so much more control over your life. This has been the most life-changing practice that I've done for myself and in my business in the last three years. And I do talk about it a lot. So you're probably tired of hearing about it at this point. So on that note, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope I've given you some helpful tips and strategies that you can implement in your own life. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video where we talk about self-regulation. Bye for now.